Hello and welcome back to Mass Effect 2. Last time, we saved a colony from certain destruction. And by doing that, we finished the last assignment that I wanted to go through. And this time, we will be doing some final preparations, and also reading more dossiers. As soon as Windows stops being stupid again, there we go, thank you. <laughs> and this is the one that I want to load. Scanning plan, this can get tedious at times. I wonder if this is a uh, message that was added by the hybrid combat mod, or if that's actually in the base game itself. And speaking of mods, actually I applied the deep Liara texture to Liara again. But this time, the Shadow Broker uh, texture instead. And it works perfectly with the exact same texture as for the um, Ilium variant. The Shadow Broker version, by default, like is a bit different because it has like more smudges and so on. But that's mainly because when we first see Liara in the mission, she's supposed to be, like, after the explosion. But it doesn't make sense anymore for that to be the case when it's, like, in the Shadow Broker's base and so on. So that works quite well in that case. I will try and update my Liara Retextures mod with support for the Lair of the Shadow Broker as soon as I can, so it should be up by the time this video goes up. Anyway, the next dossier that I want to go through is for Captain David Anderson. Actually, there are two more dossiers here, but I will leave them for later as well, because I also want to check if there's going to be any changes to other ones later on. Captain David Anderson is a rejected Spectre candidate. Close working relationship with Commander Shepard before destruction of the Normandy SR-1. Monitor communications for renewed contact with Shepard. Military Correspondence Intercept 1612 Secure Convoy number 4673 Encrypted 3467DA225 Sender Captain Farah Gapoli Arturi Station David Anderson, I have been asked to step in on the matter of your continued vocal and insistent support of Commander Shepard, formerly of the SO1 Normandy, within the Alliance Military and to third party contracts. The matter of Commander Shepard and his involvement in the attack on the Citadel Station is of high value to the military intelligence and the Galactic Council. To that end, we respectfully ask you to cease and desist your continued investigation that has been deemed closed and sealed for two solar years. Your continued agitation in this matter is deemed a high security risk with potential repercussions for galactic security. Please consider our position carefully. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact my office. Sincerely, Captain Farah Gapoli, Assistant in Charge of Operations, Actura Station. So, Anderson has been fighting for Shepard for all these two years, but it's a bit strange because this doesn't even mention, like, yeah, it even has Captain. He's not Captain anymore, he's a counselor. And technically, the Alliance has nothing on him anymore. He's not part of the Alliance, kind of, anymore. So, that's a bit strange. But then again, no. It says that it has been two years. This would have made sense if it was quite soon after the whole incident with the Normandy SR2. Because at that point he may not have been a counselor yet, but as such, this doesn't actually make sense. Hmm. Personal correspondence. Intercept 0423, number 12947DA325. Sender, Cynthia Barris, Atlanta, Earth. David, Henry and I went to Jason's graduation ceremony in San Francisco today. Such a beautiful occasion. All those gowns and bright spirits. So much potential. I know Henry would frown at the thought, but I couldn't help recalling the pomp around your appointment to the Hastings. You were the second in command, weren't you? 
The military always did ceremony very well. God, that was a lifetime ago. Jason says to send his best. I'm so proud of him. Airspace engineer. I don't pretend to understand what he does, but the gleam in his eyes when he is trying to explain his latest designs to me see that he has found his place in this universe. He wanted you to be there at his ceremony, but I know duty calls. He sees you as a heroic figure, all fighting grand battles in space. I hope you can make it for the holidays of this year. Henry asked just the other day. I know you don't see eye to eye on much, but he respects you. He respects what you do. And you know Jason is over the moon when you can take the time to review his ship designs. Let me know about the holidays and David. And David, please be careful. Love, Cynthia. Yeah, that was also covered in one of the novels. Was it Ascension? Probably. But yeah, it's also quite interesting backstory. But anyway, recent transactions. Catalog order, Dionysus Imports. Hmm, that means wine. So he ordered a catalog of wine. Video download, Saren, a hero betrayed. Purchase 2233DA116. Modus Valley brand, two bottles, white wine. So he needed to drink after watching that video, I guess. Video download. Damaged. The truth behind the Citadel Crisis. Purchase 8785DA342. Ilium Elite Brand. One bottle. Gold label Erasa. I guess he needed a drink after watching about the Citadel Crisis too. Video download. The Path of Lies. A history of the Alliance military. Video download. Afraid of the Dark. Reapers, Collectors, and Other Myths. Purchase 2543DA226. Red Janie brand. Two bottles, special stock vodka. <laughs> he needed a stronger drink for the reefers, I suppose. Services. Clean sweep, home maintenance. <laughs> That's what you get for drinking vodka, I guess. Not that I know. But hey. Alright. So I will leave the rest of the dossiers for now, and let's go back to the Normandy for the time being. Export your save games to Mass Effect 3 if you survive. Let's see how that goes. But not quite yet, because we still have a few people to talk to. So first of all, let's... Hmm. Actually, let's go to cruise quarters again, and let's see if we can talk some more with Sora. Not those cruise quarters. Morinth haunted my dreams and waking hours equally. For the first time in 400 years, I am free. I am a ruined vessel of sorrow and regret, but I am free. It is not a feeling I can describe. Welp. That's not really the right save, is that? Oops. What will you do? Assuming then? I survive. You don't want to settle down. When I die, I should go. I should go. <laughs> uh, right, because when you save, the last save goes here. That makes sense. Oops. <laughs> so yeah, it doesn't matter actually that uh, I went through this, but let's just go through it in case it does matter somehow. And let's uh, go talk to Samara for real. Make sure you have full fuel. I'm pretty sure you don't have to have full fuel. Actually, what happens if you run out of fuel is that you get towed back to the place with the mass relay. I'm not sure that costs anything, though. It might actually drain your credits instead of your fuel? But I'm not entirely certain.
Shepard. Do you have any suggestions about using some of the resources we've gathered? I have done what I can to increase our exploration capabilities. Anything beyond that is up to you. Thanks, Dor. <laughs> How do you think our mission is going? We've made real progress. We know our enemy now. Soon the time will be right and we will bring the fight to them. I will be by your side to the end, Shepard. That might be sooner than you think. <laughs> what are your impressions of Miranda and Jacob? Jacob is an earnest young man. Events will either forge him into a great man or utterly destroy him. Miranda is undoubtedly a hard woman. I respect her strength and determination. She carries many burdens and doesn't share them with others, as it should be. No changes. I wanted to check in. I am always happy to talk with you. I'm interested in hearing more about Asari Justicars. We hold a unique place in Asari culture. Justicars are from another era. Young Asari grow up watching vids about our adventures. Pure fiction, of course. Some Asari are uncomfortable with us, but so few Justicars exist that most have never met one. Hmm. There were only a few Justicars? Few Asari wish to make the sacrifices necessary to become one of us, and the training has a high casualty rate. It is a life of constant danger. Throughout the entire galaxy, there are only a handful of us at any time. Reasonable. Why would anyone want to be a Justicar? It is a deeply personal matter. Sometimes the most brutal path is the only honest one. No, oh, we know we do know her motivations at least. The Asari I've spoken to seem conflicted about Justicars. In this age, people see shades of grey everywhere. The code of the Justicar is black and white. I might seem a hero to many, but I would kill all of them if I had to. This code of the Justicar seems central to your life. It is 5,000 sutras and covers every situation one can encounter. I have memorized every word. There is only the code. Sometimes justice calls for mercy. It does not exist to bring about spiritual enlightenment. Its purpose is to punish the wicked and protect the innocent. Yeah, I mean, that is kind of similar to what John does as well. What role do you think Justicars have in Asari society? I would say that the closest human equivalent is a knight errant in your medieval lore. Perhaps mixed with a bit of samurai. And that is Bioware just uh, literally saying where this was inspired by. Great. You know about Knights Errant and Samurai? When I knew I must leave Asari space again, I studied the history and morals of new species. When I was a maiden wandering the galaxy, humans had not yet arrived. What did your studies tell you about us? You are more individualistic than any other species I have encountered. If three humans are in a room, there will be six opinions. I like your species. I am curious to see what you will do. Hmm. What does your code say about killing? I am compelled to kill the wicked. If a Justicar is involved, peaceful solutions are long past. You make killing sound so casual. I remember each being I have slain. They are always in my thoughts. Does the code forbid romantic involvement? It does not. However, I would never be interested in such. That part of my life is well behind me. You could meet someone who reawakens those desires. I am nearly 1,000 years old. I know myself and my desires. But your curiosity is quite welcome. I should go. I'm glad we spoke. And hey, we got a codex entry. I might have missed that if I did not uh, go through the dialogue otherwise. 
Hmm. Well, let's read it. Despite the refinement and sophistication of Asari culture, criminality remains a fact of life. The Asari solution to the most vicious and destructive criminal element is the Justicar Order. Justicars are an Asari class of virtually untouchable extrajudicial executioners operating almost exclusively within Asari territory. In the last decade alone, Justicars have smashed dozens of criminal rings inside Asari territory, operated by Asari and non-Asari alike. Their methods range from subtle where possible to brutal where necessary. Trained for extreme strength, biotic capacity, resourcefulness, asceticism, and ruthlessness, the fanatical Justicars are romantized and feared throughout Asari society. Although Justicars generally work alone, their effectiveness arises from the huge body of knowledge they can access. Any Asari who enters the ranks of Justicars has already spent centuries in a combination of criminal investigation, military intelligence, and combat experience. The collective body of Justicar knowledge exceeds even that of the Spectres. Justicars tend to be independent, requiring little help but also scorning it since such advanced skill and experience usually travels with a powerful ego. The conflicts presented by such arrogance prompted the Justicar Order to develop the Oaths of Subsumation. The Oaths pledge protection of the innocent, the punishment of the guilty, and defense of common law and the norms of Asari society. The effect of the oaths is conservative, ensuring that Justicars respect the existing distribution of Asari power, rather than staging a coup to rearrange society according to Justicar satisfaction. Nevertheless, the possibility of such an attack is a source of anxiety and counterintelligence among the Asari elite. Of all the pledges, the third oath of subsumation is sworn the least of any of the oaths. Requiring a Justicar to swear loyalty that overrides the dictates of even the Justicar code, the third oath is usually invoked in matters where even the black or white thinking of Justicars is forced to concede the existence of Grey. Alright. Nice to know, and I don't think there's anything to talk about to anyone here. So, let's go to engineering. And there's a number of people to talk to. Let's first talk to Tali. Shepard. What can I do for you? Can you do anything to give the Normandy an edge over a collector ship? My shield fortification will help, but I don't think there is much more I can do. Yep, so that... I think I already... applied. Yeah. Have you got time to talk? Sure. Uh, let me just... come on, you little... bullshit! Oh, sorry. I've got a small fever and I'm taking it out on the poor drive core. Don't worry, it's nothing serious. Got sloppy while doing some suit repair. It is hopefully also not serious what you're doing to the drive core. Would be pretty bad if we all got spaced or stuck in a system without FTL, you know. <laughs> you're sick? Do you need help or time to rest? Really, it's not that bad. If a stray bit of bacteria could really kill us, we'd have all died by now. The fever should go away in a day or two. Don't worry, it won't affect my performance on the mission. It's not even an illness, really. What we experience is actually an acute allergic reaction. How exactly does the sickness work? It's an allergic reaction? Right. Say I get exposed to a human disease, like... What did Navigator Presley have that time? Chickenpox? I wouldn't get chickenpox, but I'd run a fever as my system reacted to the foreign presence. Depending on where it hits me, I could get other symptoms. Nausea, vomiting, everything you'd expect from being sick. Chickenpox. It's interesting that uh, 
Presley was mentioned again. That does also remind me that, indeed, it's once again quite unfortunate that in this game there is no music in the Normandy, unlike in the first game. Oh well. So... How did you get sick this time? I took some fire in a fight back on the Alarai. Nothing serious, but I needed to open my suit to check the wound. I disinfected properly, but one of the section seals had taken some damage, and foreign matter got out of the disinfected zone. It was a stupid mistake. You always check your seals before doing local treatment. Unless you forget. Then you get a damn fever. You can seal off part of your suit? Right. Like dropping emergency doors on a ship during a hull breach. It won't stop an infection that gets into my bloodstream, but it prevents a surface infection from spreading. Alright. Not sure if that helps that much, but I guess... somewhat. Were your immune system stronger before the Geth drove you from your homeworld? Not as strong as those of most races, definitely. I'm not a biologist, but there's a theory about it. Because our planet lacked insect life, plants developed symbiotic relationships with large animals to spread seeds or pollen. Most viruses on our world were partially beneficial, so our immune systems evolved to be weak. They were more likely to adapt to contamination than fight it. Uh... Why would viruses be partially beneficial, though? And what does that have to do with pollen? Hmm. But okay. That does explain something, I guess. But Quarians colonized other worlds. They couldn't all have been like that. They weren't. Most colonists went through a period of mild illness before adapting to the new environment. When the Geth took the homeworld in our colonies, the sterile environment on the flotilla ruined our immune system's adaptability. Even if we colonized a new world or reclaimed our own, we'd need a long process of bioengineering to recover. So we've heard. But yeah, it is interesting to consider that Quarians also had colonies. But all of them managed to get taken by the Geth? In that case, I guess all of their colonies must have been really close by and inside the current Geth space. Something that you would not normally think about. Huh. I don't know if I could live inside a suit my whole life. We are in our suits even among family. The most intimate thing we can do with another Quarian is link our suit environments. We get sick at first and then we adapt. It's our most important gesture of trust, of acceptance. I haven't trusted anyone enough for that though, except... Well, no Quarians. Um, you know what I mean. Hmm. I appreciate the thought, Tally, and I feel the same way. But you don't have to prove anything to me. I know. Well, not that, that I know, but I, I didn't mean it like that. It's a... Um, wow, it's really hot in here. It's just that the tradition also signifies a willingness for um, intimacy. I wasn't trying to... It's not always like that. It's more... Um, how did we even end up talking about this? Wait a minute. It sounds like you're suggesting something, Tally. What could I possibly be suggesting? I mean, a young woman gets rescued by a dashing commander who lets her join his crew and then goes off to save the galaxy? How could she possibly develop any kind of interest in him? Well, interesting how that goes. Tally wasn't a romance option in the first game, but she is in the second game. In a sense, she takes over the role that Liara had in the first game, since without the DLCs, Liara is on a bus throughout the whole game. But also interesting is that we can also accept... You have nothing to be embarrassed about, Tally. I feel the same way about you. Really? I didn't know... you never... well, good. Anyway, I should get back to work. But thanks for coming by and talking. Timing is interesting sometimes. 
things get reflected in real life as well. But anyway, this game does handle this differently from the first game. There is a lock-in system, where upon when you get the first romance option, that is the one that you have to go with in any case, unless you cancel it. So this doesn't actually do anything, interestingly enough. But anyway, let's talk to Grunt. Shepard. Mm, also. Did Okir give you any imprints about the Collectors? You already know more than he did. Okir's is barely useful. If you bite them, hit them hard the first time. It's interesting how some of these extra options do update over time. What are your thoughts about our mission? We'll push our enemies to the edge of space, then step on their fingers one at a time until the void takes them. Ah, uh, grunt, hyper aggressive as always. Just checking in. How you doing? Battlemaster, I have everything. Clan, kin, and enemies to fight. Well, at least someone's happy. That's all for now. Shepard. Shepard. That's all for now. Shepard. <laughs> Can't resist. <clears throat> Alright. Then we also have Zaid. Back for another lesson. Indeed. Doesn't matter who you are. You got a gun in your face, chances are good you'll do what the other man says. Only two types don't buckle at that point. Train killers and psychopaths. A lot of people can't tell the difference. I was shadowing this rookie on an infiltration run to an eclipse base on Tatus. Good kid, but he had no business handling a rifle. In the shuttle on the way down, he puked in his helmet. We hit some turbulence and with all the crap sloshing around, he thought he'd been shot in the head. Went back to the Alliance. Here he's a governor now. Hmm. Titus is something that uh, we've encountered. Don't remember what was on Titus, but pretty sure we have heard that name before. I should let you go. Talk more later, Shepard. All right. <laughs> so that's all for Zed. But also, we have Jack. Hey. Tell me something I don't know about you. Nothing to tell. Why? Well, the honest answer is I want to know my squad. Just want to get all the dialogue. <laughs> If we go into combat together, we should know more about each other. If you say so. I'm not used to being on a team. It's all touchy-feely. Something you don't know, huh? Obvious stuff, like what's up with my ink, or something else just as boring. You're not really interested unless it affects you. I've been through all this shit before. You're a hard person to like, Jack. Really? I had no idea. What other amazing insights do you have that I'm too stupid to see? Yeah. You work pretty hard at not letting people get close. I've been with lots of people. If you're asking about a boyfriend or a girlfriend, no. It's a waste of time and it never works. If you let someone get that close, it just means they need a shorter knife. Lonely and alive works just fine, thanks. Seems like you miss it a little more than you want to admit. Pick every little word apart if you want, but it doesn't change the way the galaxy works. Come on, you've been around. You're tough, but you can't have survived alone all these years. When I was starting out, I ran with this girl Minara and her boyfriend. They knew their way around. I thought they'd help me. <sighs> right. They helped me into their bed. And when we finally did take down something big, they helped themselves to my share of the take. I knew where it was heading, and I got them first. Never bothered with friends after that. They sound like selfish pricks. That doesn't mean they were going to kill you. I get feelings. I don't need proof. 
I did the smart thing. I always do the smart thing if people fuck with me. That's probably something you should remember. Get feelings, and then you murder people because of that. That sounds very unreasonable. <laughs> Albite, what's with the tattoos? Some are for prisons I've been in. Some are for kills. You know, good ones. Some are for things I've lost. Those aren't your business. They're nobody's business. And some are because, hey, why the fuck not? All right. I have to go, but we should do this again. Wait. My turn with the questions. People usually walk by now. Why are you really asking all these things? Are you eyeing me up? Because if this is just about sex, maybe you should just fucking say so. No. I'm not looking for that. I don't get you. You don't want anything, but you keep coming around. Okay. Maybe we'll talk later. Maybe not. Already told you what the purpose of the talks is at the very beginning of the conversation. But interestingly enough, if you do take the option, just like Jack mentions, it doesn't really count as a relationship per se. But, alright. So, this is all for now. And next time, we will probably start the next big thing. More or less. So, see you all then. Later.